In this video, we're going to add a simple animation to our click marker, and we're going to create a custom shader graph to use a material that glows on our line path. Let's start this one off by jumping right in and making the animation on the, the click marker we have here. So we're just going to go into the prefab, double click on it, and we're going to make an animation clip. Just got to make an animation controller too. And just going to call it clip marker. Okay, so you can set this to whatever kind of animation you want. I'm just going to make it kind of a little spin thing. So I'm just going to add a keyframe at zero. Uh, add one at one second. Okay, and then around somewhere around 15. Like, you know what, actually with the scale that I have set in the game, I'm going to change it a bit here. So the default one, I'm going to make 1.5. And then say around here, set it to, let's go with like maybe 1.9. I'm gonna do the same at 45. And then in the middle, I'm just gonna make it a bit smaller than the original, so maybe 1.4. If we animate it now, yeah, it just kind of does like a little pulse. It's a bit fast. So I'm just going to extend it here, maybe go up to a two. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Okay, so I'm just going to use that. Save our scene, go back into it. Okay, and let's just test that out quick. Yeah, that's looking a lot better. Okay, so for the next part, I'm not good at post-processing at all. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna create a level container here. Reset that. I'm gonna add anything related to the level inside it. I'll put that visual objects thing in there too. Um, actually, no, I'll just bring that out. Okay, we'll make a prefab of the level, make a prefab of this. Just gonna save in case anything goes wrong here. And go to scenes, I'm just gonna open that sample scene that. Okay, so we're in the sample scene and we're just gonna delete these example assets and drag our stuff back in. So we're just gonna put the level, player prefab, and the visual object container we made. Uh, because it's a new scene, we have to set our camera again, so. Just going to take the camera, align it with view. On the player prefab, we just want to deactivate the click marker. And we got to drag these back in because we it's a new scene with a new prefab. So click marker, visual object container. And I'm not sure if we're going to have to rebake the nav mesh. Oh, we just got to move our player so he's not in the ground. So we'll put him at 0.5. Okay, so it looks like we do have to rebake it. So just select ground, go to navigation, hit bake just like we did before. Okay, so he's moving to the marker. And for whatever reason, we don't have a line renderer on there. Okay, so we just have to add that. I guess it didn't get saved to the prefab. So we'll just add line renderer. Okay, so we're back there and set up. I'm just gonna save this to the prefab so we don't have to worry about that again. And now we want to make a material for that. 
So what we're gonna do is make a shader graph. So just go to create shader PBR graph. And I'm gonna call this glow graph. Okay, and double click on it. That'll open up the, the shader graph here. So if you're not familiar with shader graph, uh, there's a lot of good videos out there. Brackies has a good intro, quite a few others that'll show you the basics. But uh, we can basically just make a shader by dragging all these nodes in. So if you hit space, it'll bring up the, the list so you can find the nodes. We just want a color node. And I'll try zooming in a bit here. Okay, for the mode, we want to set it to HDR. And for the color, I played around. The one I like here is, is it 1468, 191. And we're just going to up the intensity a bunch to four. So if we take the output of here, we'll drag it into the albedo. And this is going to be the color. So just like if you were setting up a material in Uni itself, this is the albedo field. So this time we're just doing it right in the shader. So now we got to make another color. Set this one to HDR as well. And for this color, I'm going to use kind of another shade of blue, set the intensity to one. So it's just kind of a lighter blue. Okay, and then now we want one called Fresnel effect. And this is just kind of the way it reflects light when you're looking at it. So like, um, not sure how to explain it. There's a lot of videos on YouTube I found, but it's kind of like if you're looking at a cable straight on as opposed to at a 45 degree angle how the, the light bends this kind of gives you that effect so it works good in this case for a glow so now we got to add multiply and that'll merge these two together so we bring in this color and we bring in the fresnel and on the output we just want to drag this into emission so this is what's going to actually go into that emiss emissive field on the shader and it kind of makes a glow so up at the top, just click on save, go back to the scene. And now in here we have this glow graph. So if you right click, create, and then go to material, we can create a material off of it. I'm gonna call this blue glow. Okay, so now if we go to our player, under the line renderer, so I'll make sure that has zero again so we don't get a little blip in the, the game. Let's go to our materials here and we want to drag in, where did we go? Blue glow. Let's try this out. Okay, so now we have a nice blue glow and let's add that to the click marker as well. Let's open this one up, blue glow. Okay, so now we, we have kind of a bluey glow uh, path and you can change this to whatever color you want. You can increase the glow, lower it, uh, just basically play around with those settings.